The Israelites, when they were wandering around the wilderness, you can find this in Deuteronomy 8. I love this story. He said, I led you in the wilderness these 40 years to humble you, to test you, and to prove you, to see if you would keep my commandments or not. There will be testing times in your life where God will find out if you're just serving him because of what he's doing for you, or if you will serve him in the wilderness the same as you would on the mountaintop. Amen. And I love what, what's recorded in Deuteronomy 8, I think it's verse 3. He says, I led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years to humble you and to prove you. And then he said, your clothes didn't wear out, neither did your feet swell. They walked 40 years and didn't get swollen feet. And their clothes never wore out. Now, they didn't get a new outfit, not for 40 years. So what's, what's the lesson here? You may not get everything you want. You may be in a situation or circumstance right now where you're not seeing the fullness of the abundance that's promised, but God will meet your needs. It may not be the way you'd like him to. It may not be the way you'd like him to, but God will meet your needs even if it means he has to supernaturally anoint your clothes so they don't wear out for 10 or 20 years. Come on now, how many of you understand what I'm saying? And you will come up out of that. You will come up out of it. Now, there's a scripture in Philippians 4.19 that we all just love. And my God shall supply your every need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But you're making a mistake if you only pick out scriptures here and there. You can pretty much get the Bible to say anything you want it to if you do that. So it's always wise to read what's before and what's after. And so if we would look at Philippians chapter 4, we're going to see that although there are outrageous promises given to God's people, and as long as I talk about the promises here today and what's available to you through your inheritance, you are going to shout and holler and be happy and rejoice. But now I'm going to switch gears for a minute and I'm going to tell you a little bit about what your part is. Because you do not, now look at me, you do not ever have a harvest without seed. It may be a seed of obedience. It may be a seed of time. It may be a financial seed. It may even be the seed of forgiving somebody completely that has just so done you wrong. But you know that God wants you to do that and if you will do that, then you'll get a breakthrough and come into a new level of harvest in your life. So there are many, many, many things that God asks us to do that we just put off and put off and put off and put off and put off because it's hard or it doesn't seem fair. And we're hoping for another answer. Don't expect God's abundance in your life if you're going to be purposely disobedient. See, I told you the shouting would stop. <laughs> you know, it'd be so easy for me just to preach the stuff that makes people shout and just go out of here with everybody just shouting and hollering and I could say, whoa, that was a good conference. <laughs> but if I don't tell you all of it, then I'm not doing my job right. I have to prepare you for the valley as well as the mountaintop. So, Philippians 4, we're going to look at a little bit more of it now, just to make sure we've got a well-rounded balance here. Because I get tired of seeing people just pull stuff out of here and getting everybody yelling, but not telling them the rest of it. Well, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. <laughs> now, let's read the rest of it. Verse 14 is a good place to start. Philippians 4, 14. But it was right and commendable and noble of you to contribute for my needs and to share my difficulties with me. And you Philippians yourselves well know that in the early days of the gospel ministry when I left Macedonia, no church assembly entered into partnership with me and opened up a debit and a credit account in giving and receiving except you only. <laughs> for even in Thessalonica, you sent me contributions for my needs not only once but a second time. 
Not that I seek or am eager for your gift, but I do seek and am eager for the fruit which increases to your credit, the harvest of blessing that is accumulating to your account. But I have your full payment, and more I have everything I need, and I'm amply supplied, now that I've received from Aphrodite the gifts you sent. They are the fragrant odor of an offering and a sacrifice which God welcomes and in which he delights, and my God shall liberally supply your every need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You better shout. You should get exciting about any kind of giving that God asks you to do, whether it's time or money or forgiveness or helping somebody or whatever it is, because it is impossible. I mean, a farmer with no education knows that he's not going to get a harvest without a seed. God required of me about... Four years before my father died to forgive him of course I'd already forgiven him years ago but to like completely totally forgive him and for me that meant God wanted us to bring my parents from southeast Missouri where they live to St. Louis and take care of them now I am just here to tell you that I did not want to take care of my father it didn't seem fair it didn't seem right there was no way that that could be God asking me to do that this just is not God, it's the devil. <laughs> Long story short, I finally did obey God. And it was one of the hardest things I ever did in my life. But I'll tell you what, it put us into a new level even in this ministry. And we have been able to minister to so many more people on a much broader scale. And I want to tell you something, and please get this and don't ever forget it. Anytime that God asks you for anything, it's never because he's trying to take anything away from you. He don't need your stuff. I mean, get a grip. God is not needy. If you don't give in the offering, he's not going to have to turn the lights off in heaven. <laughs> Anytime that God asks us for anything, it's only so we can be put in a position where can, we can receive the more that he wants us to have. Yeah. And I'm so tired of hearing the excuse, well, you know, those preachers are just always trying to get everybody's money. Well, you know what, if you're giving with an honest heart and you're giving to God because you believe it's a right principle, you don't even need to worry about what they do. Because your reward is going to come from God. Amen? And not only that, not everybody is just trying to get something from you. We have a responsibility to teach you both sides of this. Here's a story that I thought was interesting. A woman said to me, she said, I have to tell you a story. She said, about three years ago, God spoke to me to become a partner with your ministry. She said, I've been watching you on television for a long time. And she said, I really felt God just put it in my heart that I needed to partner with your ministry. And she said, I just didn't. She said, I don't know why. It wasn't that I couldn't afford it. It wasn't that I didn't want to. I loved you. Thought everything you were doing was good. I just never did it. And she said, a couple years went by and I still wasn't doing it. And she said, all of a sudden, I started not getting anything out of your teaching anymore. And so she said, I'm thinking, God, what's wrong with Joyce? <laughs> Come on now, this is what we do sometimes. What, what's wrong with Joyce? Uh, does she have sin in her life? You know, the, the anointing is just not the same anymore. He said, ain't nothing wrong with Joyce. I told you two years ago to start to partner with that ministry. And you are not going to sit here now and just take, 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 take without giving anything back and expect to get anything out of it. So, you know, if you go to a church and you've been, you, you've been to a church for, you've been going four or five years and, you know, you call it your church and the pastor pours his heart out to you every week. He prays for you when you're sick. He visits you and your relatives when you're in the hospital. He does the weddings in the family. He does the baptisms. He does the funerals if one is needed. I mean, he's just like, there for you. You don't volunteer in the church. You won't tithe. You won't even get to church on time, but you'll come in halfway into the worship and disrupt the whole service. And then you'll leave 
at the altar call because you want to get your car out of the parking lot not caring that you're going to disrupt a whole bunch of people and then wonder why things aren't working in your life you cannot be on the taking end all the time and expect to live in the abundance of God it's a law a spiritual law you shall reap only what you sow now and this is in every area of your life I'm not just talking about money I, you know we get all you know nervous about money and you know first of all we've already had the offering today I'm not going to take another one so just relax <laughs> you say well because I know that I'll get this question well I would love to tithe choice but I'm married to an unbeliever and he won't let me all right you don't need to start warring your marriage find some find some way to give give your time you get an allowance tithe off of that do things for people but whatever you do don't make an excuse for doing nothing amen stop thinking about what you cannot do and find something you can do hallelujah and if you will just simply get rid of all known disobedience now you know I'm sure there's probably some area in my life where I'm disobeying God and I'm not aware of it yet but when God makes me aware then I'm accountable and so when you get rid of all known disobedience and don't ever say that you know well God told me to do this but it's just too hard I can't that is not true if God told you to do it he will give you the ability to do it you say well I just I don't feel like I can well you take your first step and God will be right there with you you get rid of all known disobedience in your life and you begin to sow seed as you're led by the Spirit whatever it is if it's time or money or if it's helping somebody or if it's forgiving somebody do you know how many angry people there are in church I mean there's somebody here today you came to church with somebody you're mad at and you'll shout and holler and jump up and down about all the provision scriptures and go get in the car and fight all the way home come on I'm tired of all that silly nonsense you know we got to have the fruit and we've got to understand that God means business but if you begin to do what God asks you to do I'm telling you what you have got a blood-bought right to wait in the presence of God and say God I am expecting you to do outrageously amazingly wonderful things in my life I am waiting on you God I've got a holy expectancy I will not be denied because God is not a man that he should lie but I'm so weary of people who want a free ride even our whole world is full of people like that today people with a spirit of entitlement well you owe me that nobody owes you anything amen Of course Malachi is great bring all the tithe offering into the storehouse that there might be meat in my house and prove me now by it and see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing so great that you cannot contain it you say well I don't believe in tithing <laughs> well of course you don't if you don't want to do it <laughs> oh man I'm getting some dirty looks Well, let me ask you a question. Would you rather give up 10% to God and watch God stretch the other 90% to cover everything in your life, or would you rather keep your 10% and watch the devil take away the whole 100%?
And just think the good news is, is not only do you get to hear this, millions of people all over the world. <laughs> Come on now. I'm not just talking to the people in this room. I am specifically doing this for all of you sitting out there. And I'm glad I'm there for every, every day for you. And it's so easy for you to just get your remote and go. <laughs> and there we come. Our partners have paid for the program you're watching and we're doing all the work. And you're just like, oh, praise God, I like this program. <laughs> Woo, this really helps me, sister. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm glad I'm there for you. And I will be there for you as long as I have got breath. But I am telling you for you. You dare not be the kind of person who takes and takes and takes and takes and takes and takes. You can't do it from your family. You can't do it from your friends. You've got to get on the giving aspect of life. Where you begin to partner with people and you put into their life and they put into yours. and You give and they give. You know, even as simple. This morning I made my husband's coffee. I made, he likes the way I make coffee. So I make cappuccino and I made his coffee. So... Oh, and, um, but then I have these two little graham cracker things that I eat with a little bit of almond butter on them every morning. So Dave got up and made my graham crackers with my almond butter. Oh, <laughs> and then he ordered breakfast for us. And when it came, he had it all arranged nice on the table. And he said, come on, your breakfast is ready. He pulls out the chair for me, helps me get in. There was a little man, he said, now, don't, 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 don't uncover your food. Don't uncover your food. Wait, wait, wait. And then he comes over and picks it up. <laughs> what is it? Bon Appetit or whatever. Yeah. He was trying to be funny. He said, Boney Pete. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, Dave's already hugged me three or four times this morning and told me he loves me and He's proud of me. And so, you know, I do things for him and he does things for me. Now, you know, when he behaves like that, then it's okay with me if we go home and he plays golf. It's like, <laughs> but there's, it's gotta be a two-sided thing. Stop just being a taker. Yes, God is your provider. And yes, he wants you to wait expectantly on him. For the harvest that he has in mind for you. People who say, well, I don't believe in tithing. That's under the Old Testament law. You know, I, you may be right. But I got, I got an answer for that. If they could tithe under the law, what should we be doing by grace? I never thought of that. Amen. Amen. You know what? I can honestly tell you guys, with all of my heart, I can tell you this. First of all, God actually really put it on my heart in January. And I told some of our leaders, I said, God, God's requiring me to teach on giving again. And I, I don't do it a lot. And I'll tell you why, because I always get a lot of flack about it. You know, I always get the people. It's like, well, you know, you just, you just trying to get people's money. You know, especially being on television, it's different if you're a pastor of a church and you can explain and so on and so forth. And, you know, I, I'm just so tired of hearing, are you a prosperity preacher? Well, I'm not a poverty preacher. <laughs> you know, I don't even know what a prosperity preacher is. I mean, is that somebody who preaches that God wants to bless you? Well, yes, I believe that. I'm tired of labels and, and little cubby holes that people try to stick us in. I'm a child of God who's trying to fulfill the call of God on my life, and I'm trying to let people know that God wants to bless them and get them out of their message. Amen? And he just told me, he said, you are not doing people a favor if you don't teach them to give. And so I'm not even necessarily doing this because it would have been my favorite thing to pick out to do today. But I'm just telling you that you are hurting yourself if you don't find every way that you can give to God, to people, to your family, 
to friends. You need to be a giver. God is a giver for he so loved the world that he gave. And that's what we need to do. We need to be givers. We need to be aggressively reaching out to people. Now, let me close with this one last scripture. In Hebrews 13, 5. Are you ready to shout? <laughs> yeah, I've given myself a new name, Mama J. Let, now watch this. Let your character or moral disposition be free from the love of money, including greed, avarice, lust, and craving after earthly possessions. Be satisfied with your present circumstances and with what you have, for he, God himself, has said, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. Oh, wait, it ain't, it's not done. I will not, I will not, I will not. <laughs> Do you see that? I cannot stay in the chair today. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless, relax my hold on you, exclamation mark, most assuredly not. So when the devil tries to torment you and say, well, you're never going to get a job and you're never going to have any money and you've lost everything and what are you going to do now? You're too old to start over. You get Hebrews 13, 5 out and say, listen to this. Listen to this. God will not. He will not. He will not in any degree leave me helpless. He will support me. He will not relax his hold on me. Amen. Come on, get up and give God praise. Hallelujah. God is giving you the strength that you need. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God will give you comfort in your times of affliction. There's nothing that you need that God will not provide for you. You do not have to be perfect, but you need to get rid of all known disobedience in your life. And you need to make sure that you're sowing everything that God tells you to sow and then when you've done that, you better aggressively start expecting something good is going to happen to me today. Amen?